10 volts per division, B, 5 volts per division, C, 2 volts per division, or D, 1 volt per division. If you chose choice C, 2 volts per division, you are correct. For this question, a technician needs to measure a DC voltage around 15 volts. For best measurement resolution, the technician should set the vertical attenuator control to A, 10 volts per division, B, 5 volts per division, C, 2 volts per division, or D, 1 volt per division. If you chose choice C, 2 volts per division, you're right. In this question, technician A says the vertical attenuator variable control can be set in any position without affecting measurement accuracy. Technician B says this control must be placed in the calibrate position when making voltage measurements. Who is correct? Technician A, Technician B, both technicians, neither technician. If you selected Technician B, you're correct. The switchable probe takes the place of two individual probes, a 1x or a 10x. Fixed attenuator probes are available in 10x and 100x models. The 10x attenuator probe is used in a variety of general purpose measurements. The advantage of using an attenuator probe is reduced circuit loading. The standard input impedance for a scope's vertical channel is 1 megohm. Using the 10x probe, the input impedance is raised to 10 megohms. This results in significantly reduced circuit loading, which affects measurement accuracy. Circuit loading can cause you to measure lower than actual voltages because the probe and or instrument provides a parallel impedance across the circuit being measured. This parallel impedance provides an additional current path through the probe or instrument causing the voltage to fall in accordance with Ohm's law. Reducing the loading effect helps eliminate changing normal circuit parameters during the course of the actual measurement. Accordingly, measurement accuracy is improved. For the best measurement accuracy, always try to use a 10x probe, especially around sensitive circuitry. Use 1x probes or direct test leads for measuring non-critical, low impedance sources like power supplies or batteries. 10x probes offer lower capacitive loading effects compared to 1x probes. This is especially critical when working with RF circuits. Even a 20 PF load can significantly alter sensitive RF tank circuits. Here is an example of a fixed 10x attenuator probe. Note the attenuator unit that is part of the BNC connector. The BNC connector is the standard for scope connections. The ground lead is supplied with an alligator clip. The lead is usually removable from the probe. The hook clip is a very handy tool for making a variety of connections. Most attenuator probes have a removable probe tip, just like the 1X models, exposing a sharp piercing tip. Sharp piercing probes are especially useful when making measurements to printed circuit boards. Just make sure you don't slip with a probe tip. You can cause extensive damage to the circuit under test. Here the technician is connecting the attenuating unit to channel A's vertical input. Here is the 10x probe in action measuring a 9 volt battery. The probe itself is connected to the 9 volt battery's positive terminal while the ground connection is connected to the battery's negative terminal. With the scope at 2 volts per division, the trace hardly moves off the ground reference. Instead of 2 volts per division for the vertical attenuator, we'll choose 0.2 volts per division. With the effect of the 10x probe, this effectively takes us back to 2 volts per division. 
Let's take a closer look at the Graticule. Note the ground reference trace must be precisely placed in order to take an accurate measurement. The actual trace has moved up 4.5 divisions vertically from the ground reference trace. This is the actual DC level of the signal. Here I'm verifying that the ground trace is sitting precisely at the bottom line of the graticule of the oscilloscope. Again, I'm confirming the signal's actual deflection is 4.5 divisions up from the ground reference trace. Measuring a 12.5 volt DC source with a 10x probe works the same way. You must multiply the vertical attenuator setting by 10 to obtain the correct measurement. We set the vertical attenuator to 0.5 volts per division. But we're using a 10x probe, so it's really 5 volts per division. Connecting the signal to the scope's channel A vertical input gives us 2.5 divisions of vertical deflection from the ground reference trace at the bottom of the CRT graticule. Since we effectively have a vertical attenuator setting of 5 volts per division because of the 10x probe, 2.5 divisions of vertical deflection multiplied by 5 volts per division gives us a DC signal level of 12.5 volts. Although you have to do a little bit of math when using a 10x probe, it is usually a better choice. Before you know it, you'll be doing the math in your head automatically. But wait, what about probe compensation? I've heard about it, but exactly what is it? Well, Janie, we'll discuss probe compensation in a later section when it's more relevant to the subject material. By the way, the accompanying technical training manual has some great resources where you can buy probes and where you can get them repaired. Check it out. Before getting into taking precise sine wave measurements, let's examine the sine wave as a time-varying signal. This is a sine wave. It follows the mathematical sine function you learned in trigonometry. Unlike the battery whose signal is constant and doesn't vary over time, the sine wave does. It is obvious the amplitude of the signal changes over time. In other words, voltage changes over time. The slow sweep speed allows us to see the changing amplitude over time more clearly. Watch closely. The signal is a very slow changing waveform, but it still traces out the familiar sine function. Now it's time to speed the signal up a little. We're going to increase the rate the signal changes. This is easily accomplished by changing the frequency setting on the function generator. Faster. Faster yet. And even faster. An analog voltmeter confirms what is displayed by the scope. This time we'll use a center zero reading meter to better illustrate the activity of the sine wave revolving around the zero reference point. As you can see, the meter pointer revolves around the center zero point going above zero on the positive half cycle and below zero on the negative half cycle. You'll notice as the voltage change rate or frequency increases, the meter becomes almost useless. The oscilloscope, however, continues to trace out what the signal is actually doing, even though the analog voltmeter can't see it. That's because things are just going too fast for the ballistics of the pointer. Remember, the analog meter takes an average of the signal's characteristics. As the voltage change becomes quicker, the meter can't see the unique qualities like the scope can. You'll find the oscilloscope indispensable when the need arises 